I'm Fiona Ross. I run the kitchen in Innes Morden Tain. This is our mince. They love mince and tarties. It's nice and soft, so it's got onion, carrot and turnip in it. I'll be making the dough balls in a little while to put them on top. Oh, it has dough balls on top? Yes. Not balls. just any mince and tatties. No, it's lovely. <laughs> lentil soup, lentils, turnip, carrot, leeks. This is going to be the chicken casserole. So it's got leeks, carrot, some green bean, and then diced up chicken. And then at the end, I'll put some cream in it. And is there pudding? Pudding today is lovely bread and butter pudding and cream. <laughs> oh. Very old fashioned and they absolutely love it. I've done the menus now since quite a few years myself. New things and ideas that I have for the menus, I would cook them first for the residents to make sure they liked it before I even put it on the menu. The roasts on a Sunday are really important to them. We have scotch broth and a roast of beef or pork or chicken, all the trimmings with it. Roast tarties, stuffing, apple sauce with the pork, and then we have a nice pudding like trifle and cream. My stomach does an involuntary rumble while you're chatting. The bread and butter pudding, I'll need to start doing it quite soon to get it all ready. No, do you know what I'll need to do first is, is dice the chicken to get that out of the way and then wash my hands and do everything. That's the two jugs for the mixture I'm going to do for the bread and butter pudding. And it goes in the steamer to cook. I'll just put this on. And while Fiona's busy chopping chicken for her casserole in Tain, over in Bucky, Chef Paul Buxton and his team are busy preparing food for not just one Parklands care home, but five. So that's like 200, 250 people for lunch and for dinner. Um, so it's quite heavy, quite hands-on. Um, just as soon as you go in, go, 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 get that lunch out. Describe what we've got going on here, because there was a big rattle of potatoes happening there. You've got yes. masses of stuff here. So they have a prep list each day to do. Like today, he's got like curry, cooked uh, cut fish and fish pie. Then he's got to make two cakes, do sandwiches, doing a birthday cake. So although there's not a lot out there for him, he will every day have a lot to do. And what's in all these? These are basically um, hot and cold boxes or go out to the home. So you have your sandwiches in there. Each day it changes, so like tomorrow they'll probably have um, a cold dessert. Um, today it's a hot dessert and then they'll have salads. These are all your cakes. So we always work a few days ahead, um, just in case someone's ill or, or something happens or a home phone something goes, you know what, we've got a few more people coming in with more cakes. So, so, so here we've got what? One, two, three, four, five, yeah. five, ten, fifteen, twenty, twenty-five, thirty. Yeah, so thirty the, boxes the, of cakes. These, Forty. These will go out today. Then we put tomorrow's up. So each home, each day gets uh, a soft. So you get a sponge and get like a biscuit each day. And that's all homemade in house. Tell me about the kind of things that are on the menu, Paul. Uh, today's, right, for example, today's menu is you got a uh, tatty soup, really sort of local delicacy that is um you know and uh, when i first come in i, I try to make it the the way that i was taught but no no it's wrong so that's fine fair enough uh, people know what they want and then you've got vegetable curry with rice beautiful we don't it's just a mild curry but it's really flavorsome we build the levels of flavors so it, it's kind of tomato based but you can still get that little bit of spice you can taste all that's one of my favorites actually love it really love it and then you've got uh, mints, just mints, steak mints. So again, very traditional Scotland. Can't really go wrong with that, but just people love it. And then you've got um, boiled cabbage, which um, heavily seasoned with loads of butter. We're like, you know, you got a butter on your cabbage, really nice. Boiled potatoes. And then for pudding, you've got a uh, basic apple crumble, then doused with um, toffee sauce and then cream. It's a really nice, like, hit, like good, hearty food. It's traditional, but it's what sort of our residents probably grew up with as, as kids. So it brings back the memories, you know. And you know, everyone has a food association. It's all associated with food. You, you, you know, if you had a good meal here, you remember it. And you like that food, and, that, and that's what we try to embrace. Even when we're designing menus, we, we think about that. I mean, yes, I know there's more fancy food out there, but there'd be no point us doing it because our residents wouldn't like it. So. You know, do kind of stick to traditional. Sometimes you do do a little bit of a twist, 
But we, you know, nine times out of ten, we know what a resident's like. It's generally the older generation, and that's what they're like. We do theme days for the residents, and we do it quite a lot to tie in with different things. Like when Wimbledon is on, we've had a Wimbledon theme day. We've had tennis nets up and a, a wee game of tennis. <laughs> we serve strawberries and cream or ice cream. We've had a war theme day. We did boiled beef, which is something, yeah. it was brisket we did, but it was boiling beef with mashed tatties and turnip, which is all things that they would have had then. And does that stimulate conversation? Does yes. That, yeah. And old books, um, a lot of staff took in old books, like to do with the war and everything. So that the residents absolutely loved it. And I think we had a whole war film on as well. So the food really is at the heart of... Yes. Of generating chat and memories and conversation yes. by the sound of and it. And we usually do it through in the foyer, so everybody comes together. I'll tell you what, that is beautiful looking to Lovely, isn't it? And really? any little funny bits, I just take them off. It's a really super lean. Just dicing it up. Quite little for the residents. Everything's cut, you've got to take care and cut everything small, like fruit, veg their meat, everything, just so that there's no choking hazards for anyone. Where does your connection and love of, of food come from? When I was eight, uh -huh. I started making pancakes myself. <laughs> when I was 11, I made a mandarin cheesecake from absolute scratch. I got around from my mum for doing it all by myself. So since I was younger, I think I've always liked cooking. I love my food. <laughs> Um, you know, f food has always been, uh, why I love my food so much, is going back to when I was a child, my mum couldn't cook, she really couldn't cook, she burned water, you know, really bad. So that's why I became a chef and I just fell in love with food and, and I was quite lucky in my early career, um, very lucky with places I worked. Um, and then I worked my way around the country and come up to North East of Scotland, fell in love with it. Fell, I started working in Cullen and just fell in love with Cullen. And then as I sort of got older and a lot greyer, you realise working in hotels, working 18 or well, 16 to 18 hours, it's a young man's game. So I started looking I've got for a sort of more of a sensible job that fitted in with my family life because I've got kids, you know, partner at home, etc., etc. And um, along come Parklands. And I was a bit, I must admit, I was a bit mm, not too sure about this, never done it before. And um, yeah, I must admit it was a bit of a shock for me the first sort of four to six months. Total sort of change of of, of style, of not, well not style, but the way that you, you, you put it up. Like you're not plating things up, you're putting them into boxes to get them transported to the homes. Total system shock that was. Took a lot of getting used to, but I just fell in love with it. It's quite a responsibility you've got, isn't it? It's very big. A very big responsibility, but I love doing it and I love making sure every single aspect of the kitchen for the residents is taken care of. Now I'm going to put the chicken in the pan. This will be cooked so it's very, very tender. Lovely and soft so the residents can manage to eat it. Next job. Thanks, John. I feel I, like I should be putting on a penny and helping him. I'm just wandering <laughs> round you can if you are. Yucking. <laughs> Don't get me started. I love cooking. Mm, I'd be yeah. here all day with You'd you. Be great in here. <laughs> Lucy's doing some cleaning of the shelves. Hi, Lucy. Hi. <laughs> I have to say, you keep a pristine kitchen. I've never seen like fryers that are so clean the enough. amount of people that see it the that come in here it's unbelievable even the main coming in order say they've never seen such a clean kitchen it is absolutely spotless and i've been in a lot of kitchens in my time well it's all teamwork we've got a fabulous team in the kitchen and everybody we've got when the kitchen opened I set out cleaning sheets, I set out everything so that the kitchen can be looked after properly. Like everything's done once a week, so you can't go wrong with it. And we stay like you're seeing there, Lucy's cleaning. The kitchen at night time, that's when it gets disinfected down every single night. 
So a fresh apron going on. Fresh apron going on after doing the chicken, ready for the next job. My bread and butter could you. Lucy this morning battered all my bread and butter. There's a mix of brown and white. They're battered on both sides. Mm -hmm. um, I usually batter the tins. So I'm going to have to go to the raw area to crack some eggs. So I've got two jags because I'm filling three tins. So I'll put nine eggs in each jug. Crack them in. I bet you crack a lot of eggs in a day. A lot. An, an awful lot. Especially if you're doing lots of baking or scrambled eggs. We have 70 eggs in our scrambled egg. I'm going to add a carton of cream between the two jugs. And that's double cream. Double cream. Look at that. Isn't it Lovely nice? and creamy. And I've been working in kitchens 26 years now. Um, done everything from fine dining to, to everything in between. And you've got to treat it like you would any professional kitchen. Like you have back of house, you have front of house. And it's not to say that we're doing that because we're strict or anything. It's just the way it should be done. You know, there's a line. I mean, the guys, the other guys don't really go out the kitchen that often, which is right. I mean, and I think, but I think it's also important that the people that are cooking are encouraged to go out to see people's reactions. And it's just the way, it's just properly done. Uh, it's just what I believe. And that's the way I would always run a kitchen, whether it's in a care home, restaurant, hotel. You've got to run it like that. Yeah, and I know that um, it has more recently received a five-star rating from the Care Inspectorate. And the food was mentioned and, yes. and um, particularly commented on. How did that make you feel? It made me feel absolutely fabulous. And I was so happy to know that everyone enjoys the food. It makes me so proud of the kitchen team that we all do the same things and put so much effort into making sure that everything is fabulous for the residents. It's always nice to get a pat on the back, but that's like an extra special pat on the back. You know, that's like, you know what? You've been really recognised on what you're doing there. It's not just like the manager or, or, or even the big boss saying thank you. That's like a, a body that inspects you and, and, and basically can say you're open or closed at a f click of a finger. They're saying, you know what, well done. And that means a lot. And that's going to, you know, go around the, the whole of Murray and, and people are going to be like, you know what, you're off Parklands. I had they do really good food there. So again, it just goes back to, you're not just in the kitchen. It's the kitchen working in harmony with the carers, working in front of the house. I call it front of the house. That's just my old school. Just then working all, it's not them and us, it's a whole team. And if they don't, if they're not working correctly or we're not working correctly, then you're not, never going to get that star. You might get a three or four star. But working together as a team, no matter whether you're kitchen assistant, you're a head carer or, or a chef or cook, just work it, you feel valued, put it together and that's how you get a five star. And then next year we'll continue getting that five star. So now I'm going to put bread in the tins for the bread and butter pudding, letting them all fit in. I quite like doing this too. <laughs> I think this, this speaks to your organisation, that you do making it all fit neatly in the bottom of the making tin Making it then. all as neatly and nicely as I can. <laughs> So then we will have not too many sultanas, just a wee sprinkling. Quite a lot of brown sugar. Yeah, it's that nice, it nice soft muscovado, isn't it? Lovely soft brown sugar. Yeah. Now we'll have a little sprinkling of cinnamon. Oh, that smell. That smell of mixed Lovely. cinnamon and sugar. Suddenly. So nice, isn't it? I, I don't normally put cinnamon in my bread and butter pudding, and I think I'm going to, I'm going to have to now. <laughs> but um, what interests me is smells are really, really evocative. Smells are, are something that, that just, it's like a straight to your memory, isn't it? You're hardwired, straight to your memory smells. Yes. And so things like putting cinnamon in your bread and butter pudding, I bet that's really evocative for people because it's a it's a it's a smell and it's a spice that and it's an old fashioned cinnamon would have been put in quite a few puddings I would think steamed puddings over the years. Parklands as, as, as a whole, 
fantastic company. Uh, there's Elaine, if there's ever a problem, she's always at the end of the phone. You don't really get that from, from, from big bosses, really, in, in, in companies. It really does feel like a family. Although it's a big, big company, you do feel like it's I'm like a smaller company. I've worked for big corporations before, and it, you're just a number in those. Here, you don't feel like a number. You feel like you're an individual, and if you have an opinion, it would be acted upon. Sounds to me like you feel valued. Yeah, yeah, valued, yeah, 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 certainly. Uh, um, if I had an idea and it was a good idea, I feel that it would be discussed by the relative parties and eventually it would be acted upon. Not when you work in a big corporation, oh, yeah, cheers for that idea, then there's what you find 18 months later, someone's stolen your idea, then it happens. You're like, whoa, that wasn't your idea, that was mine 18 months ago. I don't feel that would ha ever happen in Parklands. How long will it take to cook? It's about an hour, so if I put it on about half past 11, it'll be ready just in time at half 12 for lunch going out. And are you aiming for a particular consistency with this? Yes, I don't, if you put too much of the custard mixture in it, it will then be too wet. The consistency when it's ready will not be crispy, but with the top will be maybe a little bit crispy and the further down you go it's lovely and soft so it's easy for the residents to eat. Because when so, you get that consistency right with bread and butter pudding it almost souffles up. It yes, almost, doesn't it? It, it kind rises. Of up. Yeah. Sometimes when I've got it in the steamer when I'm cooking it the lid actually rises up off it. Right, so this will be my last layer for this one. That's the bread, no sultana. Fiona, pride in everything you do is bouncing off you. Oh, thank you so much. But I'm right, aren't I? Yes, I put every effort possible into making everything work the best way it can in the kitchen for the residents. Absolutely everything. Looking after all the staff in the kitchen, making sure they're okay. I do supervisions with them and we go over things. If there's any problems, we get sorted out and just to have general chats all the time. And we have good fun. Quite a lot of out of tune singing goes on a lot of the time. So I'm going to put a tiny little bit more of the mixture in the, uh, the custard. So that's that done. Put that to one side and that will go in the oven uh, before it's needed. Put a lid in it and leave it until it's ready to cook. Good food, happy people. You know, that's, that doesn't matter who you are, whether you're in a care home or you're at home. You know, so if you get nutritional, good food that you like eating, you're going to be happy. And that passes on to the, to the residents. So, you know, maybe uh, breakfast, lunch, dinner, if they can get a good meal and it makes them a little bit happy, you know, that, that's our job done. And I love nothing more than, I normally do go out front of the house to check on lunch, how, how it's going. And you get a little smile from a resident as if, as if to say, a little nod to say, you know, lunch was good today, thanks for that. Been working here at Parklands, coming up for two years, really love it, really fantastic place to work. People are welcoming, you know, first come in, it's open arms. So if you feel like you want to work here, get your CV up to date, go over to parklandsgroup.com slash careers and post your CV and just come and work for us, fantastic. Carecast is produced by Adventurous Audio.